All right, it's time to talk about layout. Now, we already learned how layout works in Bootstrap, and we talked about why Bootstrap became so popular. Now, don't worry, later on in the course, I'm going to introduce you to topics like in CSS Grid and actually talk about really easy ways to do layout on a page. But for now, we want us to use Bootstrap because that's what we learned. And I'm warning you, this is going to seem very overwhelming. I want to show you how Bootstrap does layout because down the road, when I introduce you to things like CSS Grid, you're going to see how much easier we have it now than we had maybe a few years ago. But I still want you to learn how layout is done in Bootstrap because you will encounter it throughout your career. Now, if you go to the layout section on the Bootstrap documentation, you see over here that it has some pretty good information. We can look at the grids and we've already talked about how grid works with Bootstrap. Now, the first thing we want to do is to have a container and then maybe some rows that we can use columns on. So if we go back to our page and we open up the index.html file, the first thing I want to do around the body, and one thing I'll do with my sublime text here is actually minimize the head tag here just so we can see a little bit. So I'm going to just click on this and look at that. It's minimized so I can just focus on the body. The first thing I want to do is say that I want to create a div with a class of container. Just like that. And then we'll close this right over here. So let's indent that properly. Let's save and refresh. All right, we have everything in a container. Next is that we want ideally all of these things to be in a row. So we want the H1, the HR, and the button to just be a row, one row that we have that is in the center of the page. So I'm just going to wrap this in a div and give it a class of row. So once again, let's close the div and indent this again. If I refresh, not much has changed. We may have lost the HR. We'll get back to that in a second, but we have a row now. So that if I inspect, let's say view, developer tools, and I click on this inspect, I see, well, these elements. If I go over here and let's open this up, make this a little bit smaller, we see that we have the body, we have the div, which is the container, and then we have the row right here. All right, let me close this. Let's divide up these items into different sections. We have the header element that we can use, and this header element will contain the H1 over here. So we have the header, and one thing that we can use with Bootstrap is a class called text center. And text center, as you might guess, if I refresh, centers the text. So that's great. That's our header element. And we also want to create another section here. Let's call it section. So this is a section element. And this section element will also have the class text center. So if I refresh, there you go. We got our HR horizontal line back. And hmm, why isn't this centered? Let's inspect this and find out. So I can open developer tools by pressing command option I or control option I if you're on a Windows. And let's look at the elements. We have the container. We have the row. We have the header. And then we have the section. Hmm. Now we see over here that these ones aren't taking up the full width as we would want of the container. And we've seen this before with Bootstrap, right? We have to use this columns to tell it, hey, we want to contain or expand along the column. And because Bootstrap uses a 12 grid system, we can just say in here and that the header, we want the column 12 grid. And then for the section, we want the column 12 
grid. So if I refresh, there you go, look at that. If I go over here, I see that we have the row, we have the header, and then we have the text, which as you can see contains the full amount of the container in the blue. That's looking a lot better. That's great. Now if I close this, hmm, our text and button, it's still at the top. Ideally, it's in the middle of the image. How can we fix this? Now, this part is really, really tricky. If I actually search vertical alignment here, you'll see that Bootstrap has some vertical alignment options, but these ones are using inline, inline block, inline table, which is actually not the recommended way. Now, the way we're going to do this is we're going to use flex. And this is a new feature with Bootstrap because they're using the Flexbox utilities that we've learned about, right? So if I go over here, you can see that I can activate the Flexbox system by using the Dflex class. So if I copy this and go to container and say Dflex, if I refresh, all right, nothing happened because we've just enabled Flexbox. But now we want to make sure that we can place things vertically in the center. And this, if we scroll down, is what we want right here. Align items. If we look over here, it's align items center. So if I copy this, which is this one over here, and we add align items, center. If I refresh, hmm, this isn't working. And this is a little tricky. And I'm showing you this just to understand how to debug things. So let's say you just did this and for some reason, hmm, you don't understand why this isn't working. On the documentation page, clearly, it shows us that this should be working. Well, we can inspect, so let's right click, inspect, and have a look at our HTML page. We have the container and then the body. Now you see here how everything is in the container. And as a matter of fact, if we look at the container, we're actually aligning items in the center because the container is actually not the full page. It's only the top part, right? It's just this part. So here, the container is not fully covering the page. So what we need to do, just like we have in body, if we look at style here, you see how we have height of 100%? All we need to do is tell the container that, hey, I want you to span the entire height of the page. And in Bootstrap, we can do that by saying height 100 instead of adding the CSS style. If I save this and refresh, look at that. If I hover, you'll see that my container is now the full length of the page. And our writing is right in the middle. If I scroll up or down, look at that. It's adjusting properly. Everything is centered. That's great. Now, don't worry if this takes you a long time to figure out. Sometimes it involves Googling around, figure things out. Like I said, later on in the CSS layout section of the course, I'll actually show you how to make this so much simpler. Now, the last thing I wanna do is, well, right here. I wanna have a bit of space between the writing and the button. So what can we do here? I want another section in between these two to hopefully buffer them away from each other. So we can create that fairly easily. We can just add a new div and we'll give it a class here of buffer that we'll have to write ourselves. And this buffer class will be in between the header and then the horizontal line and the button. So let's also give this a column of 12 because we wanna make sure that it covers the entire area. But right now there's nothing. If I right click here and inspect, 
you'll see here that I have the buffer, but the buffer doesn't have anything. It's completely empty because, well, there's nothing inside here. But we can add a style, let's say dot buffer. And this buffer will have a height of, hmm, what should we say? Well, if I do, let's say 50 pixels and I refresh, look at that. I get a nice little buffer. So now if I scroll over to buffer, you see that I have a 50 pixel height buffer. But I always like using REM instead of pixels. So let's do REM. Let's see what 5 REM means. All right, that's good. Maybe a little bit more. Let's do 10 REM. Let's save and refresh. All right, that looks actually quite nice. If I close this tab, open it up. Yeah, look at that. That looks really, really nice. And there we go. We have our startup landing page right here. Everything looks pretty nice, right? And the way we've organized things seems pretty clean. Our button is, well, when we hover, available. But hmm, whenever I click on this button, nothing's happening. Ideally, we have a new page that opens up so that we can enter or our customers can enter their emails. And this is the exciting part that we're going to get to in the next video. I'll see you in that one. Bye-bye.